Hey, it's Christopher the Bronze Age Nerd. Today I went on a road trip so I could go to three different comic book shops. Let's see what I picked up today. So I got to do something today that I do not get a chance to do very often. I got to hit up three different comic book shops across Washington State. I went on a road trip so I could hit some different comic shops because I don't have very many in my area. I did hit up uh, three great comic shops. I think all of them were really great. I wish some of them were closer to me. Uh, the first one I went to was Olympic Cards and Comics in Olympia, Washington. Um, it is a uh, two-story shop, although the second story is shut down right now. I'm assuming due to, due to COVID. Uh, looks like they have uh, gaming that, that happens up there regularly. And this shop is one of those great comic shops that has tons of stuff that isn't comic books. They had tons of statues, tons of figures. Um, they had Transformers. They had uh, not really so much vintage stuff, but they had a lot of uh, uh, gaming stuff too. And I think that this shop is probably more suited to people that are looking for those things. Uh, and I say that not in a rude way. Um, they did have comic books. They clearly were buying comic collections and putting them in their inventory. There were people doing that. Um, it's just that they had a system for comic books that isn't my favorite. They had a bunch of short boxes on a series of cabinets that you'd have to pull out. Um, they didn't, like the drawers didn't pull out or the, the shelves didn't pull out. You'd actually have to pull out each box so you could get like a third of the comic book box out to like thumb through and then you'd have to either pull out the whole thing. It just, it wasn't a great arrangement. Um, so definitely not my favorite setup. Um, they also had a back counter area with short boxes that were clearly labeled keys, modern keys, vintage keys, DC keys, um, indie keys, stuff like that. And so I asked and I said, hey, you know, is there, is there like a catalog of what's up there or, or what's the system? And they said, no, just ask for a box and, and we'll pull it out for you. You can look through it. Uh, what are you looking for? And I totally understand. And I, I talked to actually the owner a little bit later, uh, came over and relieved the employee I was working with kind of in mid sentence, which was a little strange. Um, but she was clearly trying to get him on another task. Um, and, and anyway, she, she took over and she did a great job. It's not like she did a bad job or anything like that. And she just said that, uh, they were all back there so people wouldn't thumb through them, um, and, and potentially damage the books, which is understandable, of course, uh, because it could happen. But for me, it's, it's, I don't know. I'm way more comfortable with a case, uh, with walls. You can at least see what's up there to ask about. Uh, in this case, you just have to just ask for every box, I guess. And I, I don't want to do that. I could look through a box basically in five seconds and be like, this box isn't for me, uh, sometimes. And sometimes I want to look through every issue in the box. So anyways, I asked for, um, Claremont era X-Men. Do you have any Claremont era X-Men? And so they pulled out a box. You're like, well, any X-Men keys should be in here. Uh, and they had some cool stuff. I ended up getting two comics from there. Um, the first one I got is um, Uncanny X-Men 211. Uh, if you've watched the channel, you know that I collect these um, 25th anniversary border comics. Um, this one is actually a key, although not a big key, but it's a key. It's the first appearance or the first team appearance of the Marauders. And this is kind of like into the whole mutant massacre, Morlock massacre thing that happens in the comics. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't have that issue yet. And then I also got a copy of um, Uncanny X-Men 151. And so these are in Mylars. I don't want to make people think that like, because some people do care about this. The store didn't give them to me in Mylars. I just rebagged and boarded a few of these. And some of these I did not have a chance to rebag and board. So uh, keep that in mind as I go through these. But I did rebag and board those. Um, the price was decent on these. They also had short boxes, which are actually a little hard to find at most of the shops I've been to recently. So I got a couple of those as well. Um, you know, they were friendly enough. It was a cool shop. Like I said, I would definitely recommend it for people that are hunting for statues and busts and that kind of stuff. Um, if you do any kind of miniatures, they seem to have a really good selection. They had a lot of staff working. Um, 
you know, they were all busy doing stuff, but at the same time, like, I felt like I could go find somebody and get some help. This definitely wasn't like a one person running a whole shop kind of thing. I mean, this was, this was a very dedicated staff that was busy moving around. One guy was clearly going through a, a newly acquired collection or something and, and, you know, going through it and pricing it or organizing it or whatever they do. Um, so it was definitely like they, they must get new stock. Um, I would, I would need a lot more time at this shop to, to really go through everything. Um, I should mention, cause I talked about their like cheap books and I talked about their high value books. Their new stuff was all really easily accessible on like Barnes and Noble style, uh, magazine racks, basically like those big wooden ones. Um, so you could totally browse all the new books there very easily. And, uh, they were all really, you know, well laid out and everything. So not a bad review of the shop. A couple things just stuck out to me where I was kind of like, eh, I mean, and I'm very picky about stuff like that. So that's just how I interpreted it, but it's a good shop. I would definitely go back and I recommend checking it out if you're in the area. Okay. So next I drove up, uh, the I-5 corridor and headed to Spanaway, Washington, uh, which is basically the, uh, Lewis McCord joint force base, uh, which is a, a gigantic military base. Um, and it's a little town that's sort of like the base is grown around basically. Um, and uh, I, I checked out a comic shop there called uh, Comics the Gathering. Uh, I'll post, a, I did take a picture of the front of the shop and I'll, I'll post that up here. Um, but they were a really cool shop. I like going to shops that are near military bases because you might find Mark Jewelers, that kind of stuff. It's more of a possibility. I, the, he said he had had some there, but he didn't have any that he knew about right now. He said there's probably a few out there somewhere, but uh, when he's pointing at his, his boxes and stuff. Um, but the other thing I really like, since I am a GI Joe fan, there's usually a lot of GI Joe near a military base. Kind of makes sense in a lot of ways. A lot of military guys read GI Joe. Um, and this is gonna be a quick little shout out to Dream of August. Um, I was talking to, uh, those guys the other day and they were talking about, um, uh, Johnny, I believe said he picked up two copies of GI Joe 48, a direct and a, uh, newsstand. Well, Johnny, this one's for you. I got two copies of G.I. Joe 48 in, in your honor. And I already had, um, I think a direct of this. Um, and I paid $1.50 for the newsstand. Uh, it was beat up. Um, it's in maybe like, maybe like 5.0 shape. Um, and then the, the direct's in actually a lot better shape. Maybe like, maybe like eight and a half. Um, and I paid $2.99 for that one. So pretty cool um so i picked up the first appearance of flint first appearance of flint uh not too long ago and this is not the first appearance of flint but this is a really cool flint cover and the reason why i did that was because lady j is coming to the amazon series um her self-titled series and so in my mind it makes a lot of sense to get flint keys because he has a really good shot of showing up um, and it wasn't an issue I had. Um, I did have it at one time, but I sold that part of my collection. Um, I also got, uh, issue 67. Um, just a cool Lady J cover. That's really the only reason. That one was $1.49. But these were all really cheap. Um, another kind of a weird spec by here. So, again, if they're doing a Lady J series, and if they do bring in other Joe characters, which there's no guarantee they will, she could just be fighting nameless terrorists the entire time. We don't really know anything about the series yet. Um, but I think a very smart villain to pair Lady J up against would be Zorana, which is Zartan's sister, one of the Dreadnoughts. Um, and this is just a, a you know, must-have cover if, if that's a thing that does happen. I don't have... I only have... Uh, two copies of the deluxe edition of the 90s X-Men number one. So I picked up two uh, covers there. Uh, one was $3.99, one was $2.99. Nothing special. Um, I, I was looking for the Cyclops Wolverine Magneto, or Cyclops Wolverine cover, um, but they didn't have that one. A shop I went to later did have it. Uh, and wanted way too much money for it, <laughs> for my opinion. Um, and then, so those are, you know, really, really minor stuff. Um, I did get a few keys at this shop, um, and I really like the way the shop is laid out. So um, I'll, I'll talk about that whenever I'm done talking about what I got there. But First Legion, New Mutants number 26. Just a, 
a remarkable uh, Stankevich cover. Um, just fantastic. And in that one, I'm gonna throw a quick shout out to uh, Simply Chell. Uh, she talked about it on Instagram on a, on a New Mutants post. She picked up a couple of the Sienkiewicz covers. And I mentioned that I didn't have that one. There was a little bit of talk about it. So shout out to that. I finally found one in the wild, so that's awesome. Next up, I grabbed uh, Astonishing X-Men number six from the, the Whedon run. Um, and then that's the first full Abigail brand, which I already have the first cameo. So I wanted to grab that. Grabbed the Eternals two. Um, got a good deal on this one too. Um, probably, I mean, this needs a really good press, but it is mostly pressable defects that I see, um, with some, some mm, four color breaking spine ticks. So maybe like a seven, five, eight, oh, so not too bad. And I was really surprised to find this one. I haven't seen this book raw in the wild for a long time. I've seen some graded copies. Uh, for sale for, for appropriate prices or a little bit more, but X Factor 6, which is the first appearance of Apocalypse. So that was cool. So real fast, I wanna talk about the shop. So it's Comics The Gathering and um, it's a pretty clean shop, uh, decently sized, really cool storefront, uh, pretty well organized. Um, they had uh, wall graded books. They had a case with keys that were higher dollar. And then they had two of the BCW black bin boxes with um, like mid-grade keys, I guess you'll call them. And then they had um, back issue bins. Um, not a ton of back issues, but but a decent amount, like nothing, nothing to sneeze at. A really good wall of new books. I, I can't fault any store that doesn't do this, but they had like 25 and 50 cent bins that were totally unorganized. Um, I, I mean, if I had all day at one shop, I wasn't, you know, I was trying to hit up several shops. I would have spent more time looking through those, but I just, I can't look through a box like that when, like, I feel like I'm trying to get somewhere else. It's just, it takes too long. Um, but just a, a really cool shop. Um, they clearly had been buying some collections because I asked if they had any uh, drawer houses for BCW boxes. And I think the owner or one of the owners, I was like, hey, I just bought a collection. The guy had some, I will sell them to you for cheap if you want them. Let me go grab them for my truck. He brought them in. Uh, he said, hey, these are like two bucks a piece. Um, if you want them and I'll throw in the fourth one here for free because it's a little chewed up. I said, cool, I'll buy, I'll buy them, you know, no problem. Um, they look like they're in good shape except for the one. Um, so that was cool. So a really cool shop. I would totally go back in a heartbeat, um, and check it out some more. It seems like they're probably going to be revolving some stock. I got some decent keys out of there. So absolutely. Okay, the third shop I went to uh, is in Tacoma proper, and uh, that's Atomic Comics, and it's right by the, the mall there, um, if you're in the area, and um, very clean shop. Um, it, <laughs> not to make like a reverse TARDIS joke, but I thought it would be bigger than it was from the outside. I was like, oh, this is gonna be a big shop. You walk in, it's actually, you know, kind of a, a decent sized narrow strip mall shop. Um, but it was all very clean, uh, very well organized. Um, I, I felt like I wasn't finding much there. Um, uh, I will go over the comics I got in a second. I did find some cool stuff. Um, they had a system that was a little strange. They had one wall of, of new comics and trades mostly, but then like the top row would be like little bundles of uh, series and it was kind of like those were the bundles of it's almost like a lot of their mid keys were in a like buy the whole series with if issue three was hot Eh, you know like I get it and it's a way for them to get rid of all those issues instead of just selling that issue but I felt like the prices were um, high for that because it's like hey that's what that comics worth and everything else in that run is worthless I mean, pretty much like literally worthless. I'm trying to think of a great example. Um, but like they wanted uh, like 30 bucks for G.I. Joe or Battle 1 through 4. Seems, seems a little high. Um, it, I, you know, it might have been a little off on what the price was, but just some stuff that it, it wasn't really a key. But then there's also some recent keys where you could tell like, hey, they definitely pulled that, put it together, some other shoes and bundle up, which is smart. But I feel like the price needed to be a little bit better. Like, you don't, yeah, it's a, it's a hot key right now, but you don't also get a charge of premium for worthless books you're throwing in. Like you should include those for a little bit more to move them in my opinion, but you know, that's, that's fine. It's how they wanted to set it up. Um, and they did have 
like a really good single long row of boxes you can look through um, just by letter alphabetization, but they were very neatly alphabetized. So that was interesting. Uh, and then the other wall was just like mostly action figures, a little bit of statues. Um, prices were a little high on some of the action figures, but they had some cool stuff if you're into like Black Series or Marvel Legends or Marvel Select. Um, and it was all very well presented. Behind the register, they did have um, wall books, basically. Um, no graded books that I remember seeing now that I think about it. Um, but a clean little shop. Um, I've. It was not my experience. The, the girl that was working, I didn't catch her name. Super nice the entire time. But I've heard bad things about that shop. <laughs> so I was a little bit like, mm, I don't know. But I wanted to go there. And, and I, you know, those are just anecdotes. I'm not really going to get into it. I just have heard some stuff and it was totally fine. I think the pricing was a little high and maybe that's what part of the problem is with people uh, that people have with it, but it seemed fine. Uh, let's go over what I got. Um, a, a comic I've picked up a few copies of recently, G.I. Joe 11. Uh, first cameo of Destro is the main reason to get this book, but it is the first snow job, first doc, first gung ho. And one other Joe that's going to bug me, and I'll probably remember it like halfway through the rest of these comics. And then another comic I've got a few of recently. Uh, first Destro. Um, this one's actually my best looking copy now. Um, probably, probably like in the 8 to 8.5 range, so I'm pretty happy about that. And then, uh, hey, another shout out for Johnny at Dream of August here. Uh, we got <laughs> another... Another first Sergeant Slaughter, and this one is in uh, eight five, maybe nine zero condition with a press. No eight five, I'd say eight five. And this is just really quick, rough, dirty reading, guys. Um, this is just an issue that I wish I hadn't got rid of when I sold a lot of my run. Uh, it's issue number eighty two. Yeah, eighty two. Um, <clears throat> it's just a training like thing where they're introducing some new Joes and they're kind of going over what they go through. It's kind of a cool issue, actually. Uh, first Forge, right on. Uh, Uncanny X-Men 184, that is neat. Um, and this is, I think, my second copy of this now. I have another one that's on the way right now. And this is probably, probably an 8.5 or thereabouts. I paid seven bucks for it, so I'm pretty happy about that. Probably, probably one of my favorite books I picked up the entire time I was out. Uh, cause I've been looking for a copy of this and it's Uncanny X-Men 212. Um, this is the first fight between Wolverine and Sabretooth. Uh, so very cool book, um, in a, in a pretty darn good grade. Um, it, it's priced a little high for what it kind of goes for, but again, the ones I've been seeing on eBay weren't that great. So this was $22, um, which is a little higher than I wanted to pay for that book, but I, I didn't really want to pay like 18 bucks for a, a a copy that had good pictures that wasn't really that good on eBay or whatever, and then pay shipping and all that. So it was actually a better deal to get that, in my opinion. Last book I grabbed is one that I I just don't see this comic in the wild for whatever reason. Uh, issue 274, and yeah, just just a really cool classic cover, um, Savage Land Rogue kind of thing going on there. Um, just neat, had to grab it. Um, so I just want to be like clear, like I said, two of those shops I had like quibbles about, think of it more like, Hey, here's my list of pros. Here's my list of cons. I would go to all those shops again. I definitely had a good time. Uh, it was really cool to get some supplies too, because besides what you see here, I did also get short boxes and some, some drawer box houses and stuff too, which I really needed right now. Um, I will give one other note. Atomic had some my lights. So I use mostly eGerber my lights for, for my comics. I actually pretty much eventually will put all my stuff into into those, um, which might seem crazy for issues, but they're they're the best at preserving the issues, and they're they're going to last much longer than regular bags and boards. Like I've had stuff in regular bags and boards for twenty five years that, that's been totally fine. I mean, I, I know that at some point it lost some quality in it, but they were more or less fine. Um, so these e-gerbers, 35, 40 years, they probably would be fine if you didn't replace them. Plus, if I sell a comic that's in one of them, I'll probably hold on to the Mylar and the board, the fullback, and, you know, just ship it out on a regular poly bag because I have plenty of those lying around too. So, um, 
I, I go after him is the point. And I'm probably gonna do a video about why I prefer him later on. Uh, but the main point is I don't see those in shops. You pretty much have to order directly from the company or you can find some on eBay and Amazon, uh, which I have ordered from, from Amazon at least before. And, and at certain points, the price has been pretty good. Right now they're in super high demand because uh, everybody wants to put their comics in, in stuff because uh, they're buying more comics. Uh, makes sense. That's why boxes are hard to find too. But uh, I was just surprised they had them. They never have any. They had like one package of, um, I think, Current, uh, which I buy standard, but they had Current, uh, My Light 2s, I want to say. Um, no fullbacks, which is what I was asking. I'm like, hey, do you have any fullbacks? Because if they had fullbacks, I've got like 200 uh, uh, My Light 4s ready to go standards. Um, and I would, yeah, I would totally do that in a heartbeat. But they didn't have any of those, but it's just cool because I never see them there. Um, so shout out to them for having that too, which is pretty cool. All right, and the last thing I picked up, I swung by a GameStop on the way home. Uh, I was waiting for some Chinese food to get done at a restaurant. Uh, by the way, if you're watching this and it's in the middle of, of when this video is recorded, go support your local Asian restaurants. A lot of them are dealing with hard times. There's a lot of, um, well, there's a lot of racism going on towards Asian Americans right now, which is horrible. Uh, I, I hope that uh, everyone that is guilty of that wisens up. It's really a bad thing to do right now. Um, support your local Asian businesses. Uh, there's some xenophobia going on and they definitely need the support. Uh, so I went to a great local Chinese restaurant um, and I had to wait for the food, which was totally fine. Uh, so I went to a GameStop that was having a clearance sale and picked up Batman. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> didn't get any DC stuff. So here we go. Right, here's my DC representation for the video. Um, uh, yeah, so this is like the, the modern Batman figure that McFarlane did in the multiverse series. Um, you know, not, it's GameStop, so even the clearance price wasn't that great on it, but I haven't seen this in stores for a while. And, uh, cause it was one of the first figures they released and, and I picked up Batgirl who was sitting right over here. And since I picked up the Batgirl figure, I figured, Hey, may as well, may as well get Batman to go with her. They're going to look pretty cool next to each other. So, so yeah, I had to do that. Uh, I want to get the, the first Superman they released too, that comes with a little flight stand. I think it's pretty cool too. So thanks for watching this video guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I was really excited to get out of the house, go visit, visit some comic shops. Uh, for the most part, they were pretty. I don't want to say slow, but they, they weren't very busy. So I felt pretty safe. There was all social distancing. Um, two of the shops had sanitizer stations right at the front of the store. So that was really cool. Uh, they asked actually, can you please sanitize your hands before you come in? I was like, yes, absolutely. So yeah, definitely go check out these shops. Uh, again, that was Olympic cards and comics in Olympia, Washington. It was uh, comics, the gathering in Spanaway outside Tacoma, uh, Washington. And it was atomic comics in Tacoma, Washington. All worth checking out. Uh, support your local comic book stores whenever and however you can. Uh, in these times, um, you know, comic book shops in some ways are doing really great right now, um, but I still think it's important to support those local comic book shops instead of just the online comic shops, which I also support too. Um, but I think it's, it's a really good way to make sure that you still have a local comic book store to go to. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, what I'd like to hear from you in the comments down below, besides any comments you have about this video, tell me about a local comic shop you visited recently and tell me what you found. Uh, did you make any cool scores, any good pickups? Uh, what do you think of your local comic shop? Like what's their organization system like? You know, as a shopper, do you have any constructive criticism for them? Is there anything that you'd like to see changed uh, or improved? Uh, I'm always curious about that stuff. I spent a lot of time in retail. So when I go into a lot of these shops, I think about it from uh, I walk the store sort of in that, that capacity of like, hey, what would be better for the customer in this situation? So be sure to leave that comment down below. I'm really looking forward to seeing all of your answers. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Just remember, hey, 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 read comics every day.